That was right after my second time in New York, before the th third time where I stayed so long. Right. So I went back to um, back to uh, Mid Atlantic, and Piper came in. Basically, as they said he was too small to wrestle, and they uh, made him a manager. Uh, but Piper worked out and got a little bit bigger, and he, he he wanted to wrestle, and eventually he got into the ring and started wrestling. And I was, we were real close. We we made a lot of trips together, and eventually came up with. Uh, uh, I was a U.S. champion at the time, and we came up with an angle where, um, where I was gonna just bash him inside of the head with the U.S. belt. And he gigged himself on the year, and I guess he did it just, he laid himself open, because I hit him, I hit him really hard. Back then we was, you know, we were trying to make it so believable, so was, we did a lot of hard ways. And I, I core of the ring in our match in Greensboro, I smacked him outside really hard with a belt. He went down and cut himself, almost cut his damn ear off. And he was bleeding, and uh, <clears throat> we we did a we did a lot of a lot of mileage off of that. I called it the used to get on the promos and laugh and say it's the year of the ear. And I tore Roddy Piper's ear off, and and we did a lot of we did a lot of matches that we went 45 minutes, a lot of them, close right. to an hour almost every night, and some brutal matches too. Brutal matches, but I, I really enjoyed him. And Piper's a hell of a guy and a hell of a talent. And uh, what was he like outside the ring? No, oh, he's great. He's great. Piper's probably I have more respect for Piper than most most of any of the guys that I've worked with. I mean, there's some other ones that are gems, but through all this stuff and everything like that, he's still the same person. Yeah, this fans. In the airports and everything, they that's one of the main, in fact, I think that is the main one they talk about. Yeah, I finished up the dog collar match and did the job for Piper, and then I went back to uh, New York after that. Now, one of your most notorious matches would be uh, with uh, Greg Valentine, the dog collar match at Stark at 83. <laughs> <laughs> what are your memories of that program and that match and stuff? Oh, stupidities. <laughs> well, first memory I got, uh, you know, they in those days they used to let me eat with all my helmet. You know. uh, this uh, Crockett, this is again as we've said uh, the answer to Shea Stadium five fifty five hundred fifty thousand bucks, and uh, so they says to me, uh, we want you to come up with a match. Yeah, this is how stupid, how sick the guy can be. This is so brutal that people will just pay to come and see it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking, and then I, I I heard something. I'd never worked for Bill Watts because I heard what he was. I heard that there was a suit, suit some big card, and he gave envelopes to the underneath guys just saying, you should, you're lucky you're there. You know, eat shit and die, man. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They had their first, very first big show, and he paid the main event, and the other one said, you should be honored to be on this show. Okay, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm fucking honored. You know what I mean? Ah, here we go. It was the first... Um, vignette, I think, ever did, uh, done in the wrestling business. I went and got a 12 foot trucking logging chain, real deal logging chain. And then I got these collars of leather that was double leather and spikes coming out that went around and this chain attached right here. Well, you know, being the genius that I am, you know, I thought, let's be kind to us. And I put wool inside because the leather is going to cut into our necks, you know, and gentle baby soft. And so, okay, and I, then I looked at the thing, you know, it was about, well, I was weighing about, I don't know, 20 pounds, well, nah, maybe 15. And somebody says, hey, let's put this in the let's put this in the lobby. Everybody can touch it, fall on everything it is. All right. Come time in Greensboro for that match. And, you know, Valentine was great shape then and uh, they wanted a lot they wanted real as close as real as you can get so um <clears throat> put these damn collars on pick this up and ha, you know how do you have a match now with these dog collars around on a card of the prestigious 
the prestige that it was placed at that time, not compared to today, but at that time, and the the subtext of it's got to be so brutal that they'll come back and see it. So I'm very much in the moment of what I'm doing, which is ask backwards, explain a second. So get in the ring, and I thought, I thought well, first thing I'll do is I wouldn't want that guy to get any of the chain, so we better pull back. You know, and so boom, when we pull back, the chain, you can see it go, it go boom. And, you know, Valentine's like a fire plug anyway, big sausage fingers. And uh, it got real interesting as doing the match, uh, as because you'd be leading them in and you were learning along with the folks. As the match got picked up, I lost the hearing, uh, some of the hearing in my left ear. Uh, and <laughs> I haven't picked this up for you. Okay, so she's got her. So Valentine's down. Uh, we're, we're, we're going, we're going, we're going. We're hitting each other. As, we're hitting each other pretty hard. He's on my ear, and my ear's bleeding real, real bad. And at that time, I won the U.S. title from Boom. Uh, I'll show you I'm going here. We come back to the dressing room, and I get my ear attended to, and, uh, and we were, we were, we were dying. Uh, the promoter came and gave us a booking sheet. We had to do it 19 more times. And then you went, the most brutal magic. You want me to do it again? And I thought, whoa, where, where have I put myself here? You know, my ears got to fat. Yeah, all right, I'm there. And so he kept working, and, and obviously he just go for the year. And about, I gotta make this up, about the 10th, 12th, whatever time, there's this picture of Valentine. He's got, you can see, he's so hot, man. He's got the chain on, he's got my head, and he's on me, and he just got boom, boom, and he, and he looks like he's swearing at me. <laughs> what he's saying is, what a dumb fucking idea putting wool in these stupid cars. And we had a bead like herpes zosters 111 <laughs> right across here from the sweat and the wool. And he, yeah. and he is, it got to the point, you know, towards the end where, other than the nose, teeth, uh, just let her fly and never so glad to get out of something. <laughs> uh, that's exactly okay.